A Fire Upon the Deep is a 1992 science fiction novel by American writer Werner Vinge. It is a space opera involving superhuman intelligences, aliens, variable physics, space battles, love, betrayal, genocide, and a communication medium resembling Usenet. A Fire Upon the Deep won the Hugo Award in 1993, sharing it with Doomsday Book by Connie Willis. Besides the normal print book editions, the novel was also included on a CD-ROM sold by Clarinet Communications along with the other nominees for the 1993 Hugo Awards. The CD-ROM edition included numerous annotations by Vinci on his thoughts and intentions about different parts of the book, and was later released as a standalone ebook. The novel is set in various locations in the Milky Way. The galaxy is divided into four concentric volumes called the Zones of Thought, it is not clear to the novel's characters whether this is a natural phenomenon or an artificially produced one. But it seems to roughly correspond with galactic scale stellar density and a beyond region is mentioned in the sculptor galaxy as well. The zones reflect fundamental differences in basic physical laws, and one of the main consequences is their effect on intelligence, both biological and artificial. Artificial intelligence and automation is most directly affected, in that advanced hardware and software from the beyond or the transcend will work less and less well as a ship descends towards the unthinking depths. But even biological intelligence is affected to a lesser degree. The four zones are spoken of in terms of low to high as follows, an expedition from Stromly Realm, an ambitious young human civilization in the high beyond. Investigates a 5 billion year old data archive in the low transcend that offers the possibility of unimaginable riches. The expedition's facility, high lab, is gradually compromised by a dormant superintelligence within the archive later known as the Blight. However, shortly before the Blight's final flowering, two self-aware entities created similarly to the Blight plot to aid the humans before the Blight can escape. Recognizing the danger of what they have awakened, the researchers at High Lab attempt to flee in two ships, one carrying all the adults and a second carrying all the children in cold sleep boxes. Suspicious, the Blight discovers that the first ship contains a data storage device in its cargo manifest, assuming it contains information that could harm it. The Blight destroys the ship. The second ship escapes. The Blight assumes that it is no threat, but later realizes that it is actually carrying away a countermeasure against it. The ship lands on a distant planet with a medieval-level civilization of dog-like creatures, dubbed Tynes, who live in packs as group mines. Upon landing, however, the two surviving adults are ambushed and killed by Tyne fanatics known as Flensarists, in whose realm they have landed. The Flensarists capture a young boy named Jeffrey Olsnott and his wounded sister, Joanna. While Jeffrey is taken deeper into Flensarist territory, Joanna is rescued by a Tyne pilgrim who witnessed the ambush and delivers her to a neighboring kingdom ruled by a Tyne named Woodcarver. The Flensarists tell Jeffrey that Joanna had been killed by Woodcarver and exploit him in order to develop advanced technology. While Joanna and the knowledge stored in her dataset device help Woodcarver rapidly develop in turn. A distress signal from the sleeper ship eventually reaches Relay, a major node in the galactic communications network. A benign transcendent entity named the Old One contacts Relay, seeking information about the Blight and the humans who released it and reconstitutes a human man named Fomnu and from an old wreck to act as its agent. Using his doubt of his own memory's veracity to bend him to the old one's will. Ravna Bergsnot, the only human relay employee, traces the sleeper ship's signal to the Tyne's world and persuades her employer to investigate what the human ship took from High Lab. Contracting the merchant vessel out of Bantu, owned by two sentient plant scrutter riders, Blue Shell and Greenstalk, to transport them. Before the mission is launched, the Blight attacks Relay and concurrently kills Old One. As Old One dies, it downloads what information it can into FOM to defeat the Blight, and FOM, Ravna, and the Scrota Riders barely escape Relay's destruction in the Out of Bantu. The Blight expands, taking over races and rewriting their people to become its agents, murdering several other powers, and seizing other archives in the beyond, looking for what was taken. It finally realizes where the danger truly lies and sends a hastily assembled fleet in pursuit of the out of band too. The humans arrive at the Tyne's homeworld and ally with Woodcarver to defeat the Flensarists. FOM initiates countermeasure, which extends the slow zone by thousands of light years, enveloping the blight at the cost of wrecking thousands of uninvolved civilizations and causing trillions of deaths. The humans are stranded on the Tyne's world, now in the depths of the slow zone. Activating the countermeasure costs FOM his life, but just before Fom dies, he realizes that, although his body is a reconstruction, his memories are real. 
Vinji expands on Fom's background story and aid deepness in the sky. A race of humanoids with colorful butterfly-like wings who attempt to use the chaos wrought by the blight to re-establish their waning hegemony. Despite their attractive, delicate appearance, the Abrahanti are an extremely fearsome and, and vicious species. An ancient, malevolent super-intelligent entity which strives to constantly expand and can easily manipulate electronics and even organic beings. An older race which originally inhabited Chandra K before the arrival of humanity. All humans in the novel are descended from Nigerian stock. Their ancestors were Tuvo Norsk asteroid miners from Old Earth's solar system, which is noted as being on the other side of the galaxy in the slow zone. One of the major human habitations is Chandra K, three systems comprising roughly 28 billion individuals. Their main language is Sam Norsk, the Norwegian term for a hypothetical unification of the bookmall and in Norsk forms of the language. A race of plant-like beings with fronds that are used for expression. The writers have no native capacity for short-term memory. Five billion years ago, someone gave the species wheeled mechanical constructs to move around and to provide short-term memory. It is later revealed that their benefactor was the Blight, and it is able to corrupt and remotely operate the riders via their scrotes. A canid race, each person comprising a group mind of four to eight members, who communicate using very short-range ultrasonic waves from drum-like organs called tympana. Each soul can survive and evolve by adding members to replace those who die, potentially for hundreds of years, as Woodcarver does. A race of insectoid humanoids which constitutes one of the majority races of the Vernimi organization. Vinji first used the concepts of zones of thought in a 1988 novella The Blabber, which occurs after fire. Vinji's novel A Deepness in the Sky is a prequel to A Fire Upon the Deep set 20,000 years earlier and featuring Fom Nguyen. Vinji's The Children of the Sky, a near-term sequel to A Fire Upon the Deep, set 10 years later, was released in October 2011. Vinji's former wife, Joan D. Vinji, has also written stories in the Zones of Thought universe, based on his notes. These include The Outcasts of Heaven Belt, Legacy, and a planned novel featuring Fom Nguyen. Vinji's original title for the novel was Among the Tines, its final title was suggested by his editors. A Fire Upon the Deep shared the 1993 Hugo Award for Best Novel with Doomsday Book. The book was nominated for the 1992 Nebula Award for Best Novel, the 1993 John W. Campbell Memorial Award for Best Science Fiction Novel, and the 1993 Locus Award for Best Science Fiction Novel. Joe Walton wrote, any one of the ideas in A Fire Upon the Deep would have kept an ordinary writer going for years. For me it's the book that does. Everything right, the example of what science fiction does when it works, A Fire Upon the Deep remains a favorite and a delight to reread. Absorbing even when I know exactly what's coming. Thanks for watching.